God bless you. God bless you. We're going to get into the word of the Lord this morning. We thank God for his visitation. We thank God for his presence. We don't take it for granted, but we're so glad that the Lord has visited us this morning and is with us. I'm going to ask you if you would turn to Matthew chapter number 9. Matthew chapter number 9, verse 35 through 38. And we will read, stand for the reading of the gospel. Yes. Maybe slow it down just a little bit more for me. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 9, that's perfect. Verse 35 through 38. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. So far the scripture. Father, bless this witness. Dear God, charge it with your power to the end, O oh God, that your name would be glorified, your people built up and edified, and an alarm sounded for both saint and sinner. God, touch our ears that we will hear what the Spirit says to the church this morning. God, touch our hearts that your word will fall on good ground take root and bring forth fruit these blessings we beg in the name of he who died rose again and lives forevermore jesus the christ amen you may be seated we've been teaching from the topic god wants to use you god wants to use you and this morning we're going to continue uh, preaching on the topic God wants to use you. And this morning we're going to be talking about no laborers, no harvest. No laborers, no harvest. Now this is our summer harvest and as you all know in our summer harvest we have been having our uh, last week as I mentioned we had our community event, a beautiful event, we praised God. It was a wonderful time, we broke bread and shared. But as part of our summer harvest, we're having several of those events. We're having a few events in the park and we're also having uh, our uh, friends and family as well as we're going out on the weekend, Saturday and or Sunday or both, and we're also making phone calls. We've sent out uh, flyers, but we also have some other public relations and social media, social media plans involved for the harvest. And you say, Pastor Bev, why are you spending so much time on the harvest? Don't you know that it's summertime and people are traveling? Don't you know people have been pent up for a year and people aren't ready to come back to church? They want to get their vacation on. Don't you know that this is not the right time for a harvest? And the Bible tells us that the disciples asked a similar question. And Jesus said to them, say not this is not the time. Say not that the people aren't ready. Say not that people don't want to hear about the gospel of the good news. Jesus' response to them was that the harvest is ripe, that the fields are ready. I know we have come to this place. This is a different town from where our church was. We were in Harlem and now we're in Yonkers. This was the door that the Lord opened. And as doing so, we have to reestablish ourselves in this community because most of us are not a part of this community. So we have to reestablish ourselves in this community. But how many of you know whatever God plans, whatever he plans, whatever he sets forth, that he's God enough and big enough to back it up? 
As I was mentioning, I believe uh, what the, uh, as with Solomon, that the name of the Lord is on this house. And you say, how can you make that statement? Because I believe that the Lord meets us in this place. I believe that not only does he meet us, but the presence of the Holy Spirit comes and attends to every need in the building. I also believe that he not only attends to the needs in the building, but he attends to the needs of those who are watching online, to those who might turn us on on YouTube during the week. I believe for every person under the sound of my voice that because the Spirit of the Lord has put his name here, the name of Jesus, because the Spirit of the Lord gathers with us on Sundays, because the Spirit of the Lord is with us as we pray during the week on the prayer call, because the Spirit of the Lord is with us even on Wednesdays as Pastor Kathy teaches about the parables. I believe that every encounter that God is moving in our lives, I believe even when we don't see him working, he's working. I believe because we are tied to a place where he put his name that he's going to do great things in our lives. If you believe that, I want you to put your hands together and bless him. If you believe that God's going to do great things in your life. If you believe that God has good things in store for you. The harvest is a gathering of crops, especially of food. And of course, uh, well, I have my light, so if you guys wondering while I was doing that, I can't really see, but I remember what I read about the harvest. So a harvest is a gathering of the crop. And so we know a little about it, whether we grew up on a farm or not. We know that the farmer plants the seed. And after he plants the seed, he tends to the seed. If it's too hot, he makes sure that he makes sure that they don't freeze. He does whatever he needs to do. If it's not enough water, he puts in irrigation to make sure it's enough water. Whatever the case, whatever he needs to do, he tends to uh, the seed that he has sown so that when the time of the harvest come, he can gather them up. Now, what the Bible tells us about the harvest in the New Testament, we see that it's usually figuratively, figuratively used figuratively as a matter of speech. In the, old, in the Old and New Testament, harvest and agricultural terms were well understood. Today, we, everybody doesn't have a farm. Everybody doesn't have to go and plant crops from themselves. All you have to do is go to the grocery store. Somebody else does it and then it's distributed. But back then, everybody understood the principle. And so those terms made a lot of sense. But I think we can understand it today. And that is the seed is sown, it is tended to, and then a harvest is reaped. The Bible tells us, and this is uh, in Amos 1.13, that a good cultural year would have a one, it would be one of a good ingathering of a harvest one after another. So, it, you know, sometimes you say, well, it's not harvest time. We'll wait for the harvest. But on a good harvest year, something is always ready to be harvest because the sower is always sowing. He's always taking care of the crops. And then always throughout the cycle of the year, there's a crop to be harvest. The Bible tells us that one plants, one waters, but God has given the increase. The Bible also tells us that we will gather and harvest of that which we have not planted. Some of you remember how we planted and we sowed seeds in, in Harlem. I believe that somebody will come along and harvest the seeds that we planted. Oh, I need somebody to understand where I'm going with this this morning. 
We planted the seed. In some case, we watered, but somebody else is coming along, and the Bible tells us that God will give the increase. I believe that right where God has put us, that he has put an assignment on the Morning Star Church. I don't believe that he brought us to this place, gave us this facility, allowed us to be in a position where we could have multiple ministries in order to sow into the kingdom of God. As I talked about and shared on yesterday, part uh, last Sunday, what we are doing is we're partnering with God to bring forth the mission of Jesus Christ in the earth. When you think about what this passage tells us, it makes sense that we are partnering, that we are co-laborers with Christ and sharing the good news of the gospel. All you have to do is turn on the television to watch the news. You will find out that in the last 12 to 15 months, there was a a tremendous increase in uh, 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 drug overdoses. That all you will also find that there was a tremendous increase in suicide. You will also find out that there was a tremendous increase and still is homicide. And that one, I, you know, I feel a little uh, very personal to that uh, because I remember when I was in Chicago doing some research and I was uh, interviewing some lifers uh, for a ch book chapter I was writing, and they had spent 20 years in prison and was released. And I went to the uh, to their halfway house and interviewed these young black men and talked about uh, what they had been through and the prison experience. And then I asked them, but why is it that black men are killing other black men? Why is it that we're killing each other? I, you know, can you please help me understand it? And then he talked about the, you know, the military mindset that's put into kids as they're, as they're uh, brought into the gang. But he also said to me that we understand something very clearly, that if we don't kill children, or don't kill people that are not black, that we're likely to be able to get away with what we've done. I'm gonna say that again. As long as we're killing each other, then somehow we're able to get away with it. That's what he was sharing with me. And it feels very personal because I believe that it's almost an assignment of principalities and powers all over this nation to destroy the lives of young black men. And when I, and, and, and you know, we, I, I believe that, uh, uh, and, and, uh, I, I was thinking yesterday, something my pastor used to say, a scripture from the Bible, when Ethiopia, Ethiopia stretches forth her hand, princes shall come out of Egypt. I believe that God has a plan for black people in America. Now you might sit back and say, oh, there she goes, but it's biblical. The Ethiopia in scriptures was used for Africa. And, the, and basically the scripture is telling us that when Africa rises up, when those of African descent rise up, then princes shall come out of Africa. Princes will rise up to teach. Princes will rise up to preach. Princes will rise up and uh, uh, be men and women in the kingdom of God. And I saw this young man, his name is Chandler Moore, you might know him, he's a worship, worship leader. He went back to Africa and he was leading them in uh, worship and I think it was maybe two or three hours of worship, just leading them into worship. God has assignment for these young men. God has an assignment for these young women, but it is the principalities and powers and dominions that have power over these cities that are causing black men to kill each other, causing young black boys to kill each other. And the Bible tells us that a bloody man will not live out half his days, but there is a crisis afoot. We also see that there has been mental illness that is on the rise. Why are you mentioning all that bad news? I'm mentioning because God has called us into the body of Christ. He's cleaned us up. He's put us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Not for us to come and just uh, have a social event with each other. Not for us to come and make the church some kind of social group. But he called us out 
out so that we could be co-laborers with Christ. He called us out so that somebody who might have committed suicide, when they had an encounter with you, God would turn that situation around. The devil have to back up off of them because as a co-laborer with Christ, you are doing what it is that he called you to do. The Bible tells us when Jesus saw the multitude in our text today that he had compassion on them. And I'm thinking about the people that we just called out this morning, people who have committed, who are committing suicide or contemplating it, people who uh, are committing homicide uh, in our inner cities at such high rate, people who are suffering from mental illness, overdoses that have uh, uh, doubled and tripled in the last 12 to 15 months. I believe as those that God has called out that he has commissioned us to go and spread the good news of the gospel, to spread the good news that you don't have to be lost, to spread the good news that you don't have to die in your sin, to spread the good news that there is hope. This is not the end of it all. This is not all to life. This is not the end of the road. God has so much more in store for you. I believe that God has put it in our hands as co-laborers with him that we would back off the assignment of hell off of men and women. I believe that he has made us co-laborers with him that we can call men and women out of darkness into this marvelous light. He has positioned us as co-laborers to do greater works than he has done. Oh, somebody ought to bless him in this house. If you know that you're called to do greater works, you ought to bless him in this house. As I mentioned last week, he has not just called us to do this and left us alone to ourselves. He's called us to carry on his mission by giving us the power of the Holy Spirit, by baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. And doing so, we have power. Somebody shout power. I remember that's, I like that, Pastor. <laughs> Somebody shout power. I believe last week when we went out last Saturday, I ran into a, a, a woman and I invited her to church and I said to her, can I pray with you about something? She said, my son, I need prayer for my son. I was looking at her name last night and calling her name and her son's name out before the Lord last night. But, the, I, but I took all the information and, why, and I said, can I pray with you right now? And I took the time right then and there and prayed for her. And as I prayed for her son, the Holy Ghost showed up in the prayer. As I prayed up in the, as I started praying, the Holy Spirit started backing it up. And I was praying that God would protect her son and, and that God would draw him into him. And as I was praying, I could look at, at the, this woman's face. And she said she had come and she was waiting, uh, she'd come for a pizza. And after we prayed, um, she thanked us for the prayer and then she drove off. But uh, Sister Antoinette and I were talking and we believed that even as we were praying, the Holy Spirit was ministering to that woman. I believe that whatever the devil had planned for her son, that God interrupted it with our prayer. I believe that whatever... The enemy had planned that God said not today. I got Beverly Frazier over there in Yonkers praying for him. He's in Texas. He don't know it. But I got her praying and backing the devil up off of him. I believe that God has called us, according to the word of God, to intercede, to be the person, to be the goal in between person, that every time the enemy thinks he's won another soul, here come Tyrone. Every time the enemy think he done pulled somebody under, here come Pastor Neil. That every time he thinks that they have thrown in the, the towel, here comes Sister Laura. I don't know about 
about you, but I want to be a co-laborer with him. I want to be a co-laborer to destroy the works of the devil. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. If you want to join in. You know, there's so much power in interceding for other people. You know, a lot of times, and I get this a lot, and I understand, when people want prayer, they want prayer for themselves, and they want prayer for their children. And I do get that. I understand that. But how many of you know that God has put us in a position to intercede for others? How many of you know that everybody on your street ought to be blessed because you're a praying woman? Everybody in your neighborhood ought to be blessed because you're a praying man. Stuff that would come up on your street ain't even going to come up because Neil Ferguson live in that block. Stuff that's going on in your building got to shut down because Kawana is in that building. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. He stirred us up to make a difference. Here's what I like about the passage, and I'm almost through. The Bible says that when he went through Matthew chapter 9, it says he healed every disease. I don't know about if you, I don't know if you realize it, but every believer, according to the scripture, has a power, a prayer of healing in your mouth. I don't know if you realize it, but every believer who calls on the name of Jesus can lay hands and declare healing over folk. I don't know if you know this because the power is not in you. The power is in the name. But he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Do I have any believers in the house this morning? These signs shall follow them that believe. Do I have any believers in the house in the, this morning? What does that mean? That means that healing is in your mouth. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. Some, you might not want a man up. You might not want a woman up. But healing is in your mouth. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise this morning. Healing is in your mouth. But what I loved about it, Sister Lisa, he said he was healing every disease and every affliction. And I believe that in our mouths that God has given us the authority over sickness and disease. I believe that sickness and disease is not God's idea. It is not God's plan. I believe that it is the will of the Lord that we be healed, that we be well, that we be in good health even as our soul prosper. So I want everybody in this building who needs healing in your body, I want you to lift your hands right now. Woo, in the presence of the Lord. And I declare in the name of Jesus, healing miracles in this house this morning. Oh my God, every uplifted hand. I declare healing miracles. Every sickness, every disease, be gone in the name of Jesus. Oh, if you receive your healing this morning, put your hands together and give God Oh my God. Hallelujah. Come on, if you received it this morning, look at somebody and tell them healing is the children's bread. You can't declare healing on somebody if you don't declare it for yourself. You can't be walking around with sickness and disease in your body. How are you going to rebuke it out of somebody else? Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hey, woo, somebody look at somebody and tell them be healed in the name of Jesus. Woo. Come on, look at somebody and tell them be healed in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody and point to them and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Woo, my God, my God, my God. Yes. Yes. Woo. So you can't break through for somebody else unless you know that you got the breakthrough power on the inside. So when you run up, when you run up on that, yeah, more, nah, nah. When you rub, when you run up on that drug addict, when you run up on that drug addict. 
when you run up on that gangbanger, when you run up on that adulterer, when you run up on that person who's ready to give in the towel, throw in the towel, when you run up in that person with mental illness, honey, you need to know that you've got the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside. Hallelujah! The Bible said he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. Don't you know that most of the people who have not received Jesus Christ, if you haven't received Jesus Christ, that you are, that they are harassed by the devil? Anybody ever been harassed by the devil? I remember my sister and I, my sister Phyllis and I, we used to talk about, we used to talk about how uh, the hellhounds were loose, Pastor Neil. <laughs> we would call each other, we said, the hellhounds sure loose this week. Because that means, Sister Lisa, they're just nipping at you and heel. They're just messing with you. They're just messing with you. But how many of you know that even when the hellhounds start to harass you, that you have the authority in your mouth to declare the victory? Hallelujah! That even when they keep messing with you, even when they keep harassing you, that you have the power in the Holy Ghost to cause the enemies to back up off of you. Oh, somebody ought to bless him. Somebody ought to bless him in this house. What I usually do, Pastor Neil, if it's something that I can't shake and it keeps on bothering me, and every time I look, it's one thing after another. Anybody ever have that one thing after another, one thing after another? Every time you finish with one thing, something else. And every time you think something else about the end, something else pop up. But honey, I got a good remedy for you. Every time I have that kind of going on, one of the first things I do is begin to fast and pray. Everybody got quiet. I hear you. One of the first thing I would do is begin to fast and pray. This week, I was fasting and praying and heard some news about some things going on uh, with some members in the family, and I needed God to break that thing. Oh, come on, somebody. I needed God to break that thing, so I began to fast and pray. And as I was fasting and praying, I prayed for all the things in the family that had been popping up. Then I began to pray for the Morning Star Church. I began to pray for each member and each person that's a associated with this church, but I knew one way to back it up was to go into fasting and praying. One remedy when the enemy starts messing with you is to begin to fast and pray. So don't, don't tell me that you don't have the victory. You have the victory right in your hands. Don't tell me that you have to throw up your hands. You got the victory right in your hands. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. If you know you got the victory... And so I begin to fast and pray, and I'm going to fast and pray this week too because there's some things that didn't let go of and I needed to let go. Anybody else got some things you need just to let go of you? You're just tired. You're sick and tired. Of it. And I'm just saying no. And I, what I said to one of my family members, I said, how could a family have that many believers and things not be blocked that the enemy trying to bring? Do y'all hear what I'm saying? That means that we have to do what it is that we know to do, and we have to realize that we have the authority. So when we realize it in our own life, when we run up against somebody who need to be delivered, when we run up against somebody who's been fighting with the devil, when we run up against somebody who's trying to be free, it's not hard for us to declare in the name of the Lord Jesus be made whole. It's not difficult for us to declare that every assignment of hell be broken off them. It's not difficult for us to say that every, every demon, uh, every hex, every witch's uh, plot, every uh, scheme of the devil need, will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. It is not difficult for us to say that even though the enemy would come in and he would attack us, that the Lord would lift up a standard against him. Why? Because we have already have the victory. So then we can declare the victory over somebody else. So even as we go out, even as we go to share the good news, even as we have compassion on those that are struggling in their lives, we can declare you have the victory in the name of the Lord Jesus because I have the victory in my life. I declare in the name of Jesus that you have the victory. 
Somebody say, you got to get it for yourself first. You got to get it for yourself. You got to get some victory. Yeah, come on, shot. You got to get some victory in your own life. You got to do the work. You got to do the, what kind of work? I'm talking about fasting and praying and staying in the word of God. And I'm finished, I'm finished. But he says that he had, they had compassion on them. They had compassion on them. I want you to know that you have been empowered to be a co-laborer with Jesus Christ. And when we see people in their situations, we don't judge them. How many people know you don't have enough information to judge people? You don't have enough information to judge. You don't know enough about what that person been through. You don't know uh, enough about uh, uh, the things that they've, uh, what happened in their lives. Only God knows. So we don't judge them. You might look at a person and you might say, uh-uh, and want to throw up your, throw up their, throw up your hands and, and, and say, uh-uh, I'm not going, you know, that person is too far gone. How many of you know that I don't care how far you've gone, if you're willing to open your mouth and declare Jesus is Lord, that Jesus will pull you back from the gates of hell. I don't care who you are. It, God has put a word in our mouth to go out into the highway and the hedges. He's put a word in our mouth to let those who are struggling, I was looking at it and I said, Lord, but you know, rich people need the word too. Rich people need to be delivered. Everybody's struggling with something. But what I was looking, and I believe that, and, I'm, and I promise I'm done, but what I was looking at last night, he had invited all the fine people to come to the wedding. It was just a story, a parable of a, of, a, of, a, of a big feast. And he, the, the Lord had invited everybody to come. And when it was time for the, uh, for the feast, they didn't show up. And he asked the men that he sent out to go get them, where are they? He said, they didn't come. I've invited them, but they didn't come. He said, well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out to the highway and to the hedges. I want you to go where the people that are, don't uh, 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 have everything together. I want you to go out to the places where uh, people might not normally want to invite them in. And I want you to go invite them to this feast. A feast is set and a feast that is prepared, a feast that will change their lives, a feast that will take somebody who is at the bottom and bring them up to where God would have them to be, a feast that would allow somebody who thought that this was the end for them to wake up out of their stupor and realize that the best is yet to come, a feast that would allow them to see this problem that I've been struggling with all all my life that I've got hope that I've got deliverance in the Lord Jesus a feast that will allow them to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus oh you ought to give God praise in his house this morning I believe you can stand to your feet I, I you can stand to your feet I believe according to the word of God, that God has given us what we need to be world changers. He's given us what we need to interrupt the plan of the enemy. He's given us what we need to change the trajectory of our family. One of the things that I was fasting and praying about, I said, Lord, the enemy will not have the victory. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. There's some things going on. You can't control it, but you know that God can. There's some things going on that are difficult things. And if God doesn't move, it would be a desperate situation. Just because I'm the pastor don't mean that the enemy is not working in my family, trying to kill, steal, and destroy. But how many of you know that I know that I am a co-laborer with Christ, and I stand with Jesus Christ? You know, the, the word uh, Holy Ghost, the word comforter, 
is translated paracletus. That is like a paralegal or a paraprofessional, somebody that works alongside. How many of you know when you have the Holy Ghost, he works alongside you? So as I work alongside the Holy Ghost, it got more shine. Woo! The third person of the Godhead. As I work alongside the one in the beginning who was with God, who moved on the deep and everything God said, he brought it to pass. The third person of the Godhead who gives me power. So I say to the enemy, you can't have my family. All right. Is there anybody in here who will say to the enemy, you can't have my family. You can't have my children. You can't have my grandchildren. You will not destroy a member of my family. I block in the name of Jesus every assignment against my family. I block in the name of Jesus every assignment against my life. How many of you know that the enemy's out to kill, steal, and destroy? He's not out to play patty cake. He's out for keeps. You know, if we could do whatever we want to do and have control, I think we'll all be out there in the world having fun. What do you think? Uh-huh. I mean, we would all get out and do what we want to do and have a little fun. But here's the other side to it. The enemy will always take you further than you're willing to go. It will always cost you more than you're willing to pay. And he doesn't just want you to have a good time. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your influence. He wants to destroy your marriage. But how many of you declare today that you have the victory over the enemy in your life? Ooh, somebody ought to receive it. The Holy Spirit is here. Somebody ought to receive it. Somebody ought to receive it. Somebody ought to receive it. So you have the victory in your life. You're not going to let him get a stronghold in your family. Do y'all hear what I say? I, 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 hear, I, I believe somebody going to be fasting this week for your family. Somebody going to be fasting this week so that the enemy will have no victory in your home or in your life. When we have positioned ourselves, Pastor Neil, as we partner with the Holy Ghost, then we are ready as co-laborers for Christ to go into the highway in the hedges. We are prepared to keep one more boy from being shot in the street. One more teenager from being gunned down just as he goes to the corner store. 12-year-old in the Bronx, 13-year-old in the Bronx, or this week, shot, minding his own business, wasn't a part of the gang. Just in the wrong place, at, well, the right place, but the wrong time. How many of you, we can't get, know that we can't give our communities over to the devil? You need to be the person in your community that stop that foolishness from going on. How do you do that? You stand and pray and you partner with the Holy Spirit and you watch God do it on your block. You watch God do it in your neighborhood. You need to get somebody to pray with you. Get somebody else to believe God with you and believe. You need in your family, get somebody else that's a believer to, to pray with you and believe God with you. But God has empowered you to do the same thing for those who do not know him. Do y'all hear what I'm saying this morning? He has empowered you to keep some young woman out of human trafficking. You, you, you're the person that stands between somebody and another drug overdose. Do y'all hear what I'm saying this morning? You, Minister Tyrone, you are the person to keep some other young men out of jail. God put it in your mouth. 
God gave you that testimony. He's partnering with you to destroy the works of the devil. Oh, somebody ought to praise him this morning. You know, I would love to preach a sermon where we all shout. And where, I mean, I, we, could, we could do that too. You know, we got all those sermons that make you feel good. But I believe that God is calling us to a higher service. I don't believe that he brought us here for us to just look at each other and be happy about looking at each other and eating food and playing games. I love all of that. But I believe he brought us here to co-partner with him, to co-labor with him so that men and women might be saved. I believe he called us here so the neighborhoods, so the communities that the devil would just take over, he can't take it over. He has given us what we need. And as we surrender to him to be about our father's business, I believe God will straighten up some stuff in our lives. Somebody said, well, I don't have time because my stuff ain't together. Come work in the labor and see if God won't put your stuff together. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody. Come, come work for the Lord and see if he won't put your, your stuff together. Uh-huh. Come share the good news of the gospel and see if God won't break out in your family. Uh-huh. Come do some, come work in the vineyard and see if God won't set your children up. And I promise I'm done. But I'm thinking about Eliza, thinking about Brazil, thinking about these children in this church. And, you know, I believe that God has some ways made for them. Some of because of what they've done, but some of because of the seeds that have been planted before them. I believe that even as you commit yourself to the work of the Lord, that the, God is going to line up some stuff for your children. I believe even as you start doing stuff for the work of the Lord, God's going to set some things up for you. You know, one of the things that I have been believing God for is that my student loans will get paid. And then I said, you know, and, I, and you all know some of this, and I said, Lord, I, I believe that my, my house is going to be paid off. Now let me say this, I don't have a plan for it yet. I just believe God for it. How many of you know if you go after God business, God's going to take care of your business? I know we got some people here in shelters, but honey, I don't care what they do for somebody else. As you stay faithful for the Lord, the Lord's going to take care of you. You better believe that. You keep on being faithful to the things of God and see if God won't open up the windows of heaven. Keep on being faithful to the things of God. See if God won't open doors of opportunity. You'll be shaking your head and say, nobody got it like this. We don't serve the Lord for what he gives us. That's not why we serve him. But if you serve him, he will bless you. If you serve him, he will bless you. So I just want everybody just to stand to your feet. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I just want you to lift your hands. And I'm going to pray a prayer. It looks like we only have believers in here this morning. And we just declare right now in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is the last Sunday we just have believers. Amen. Amen. We need some, I mean, it's wonderful to have believers, but that's not all why we're here. We're here to build up the saints, but we're also here to sound an alarm for sinners. Hallelujah. Even as you lift your hands right now, Father, I just want to seal this word. 
Lord, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for every family represented. Lord, I thank you for every need represented. God, even those needs that we are too embarrassed to share, even those needs, God, that we can't even hear the words come out of our mouth. Lord, as we stand before you, we declare in your presence that every need is met. God, we declare that you're stirring up in us compassion for those who do not know you. That you're stirring up in us, oh God, compassion for those who are losing their lives every day without you. That you're stirring up in us, oh God, compassion so that we can do what we can do. That you will allow us to plant and water and God, that you will allow us to harvest. Lord, we thank you that you are standing up big in us. Stand up big in us, Holy Ghost. Stand up big in us, Holy Ghost. Take everything out of us, oh God, that's not like you. Stand up big in us, Holy Ghost. Make us more into the image of Jesus Christ. Stand up bigger in us, Holy Ghost. Let the words of our mouth, oh God, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Oh God, create in us a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit. Woo! God, so that we can work for you. Woo, make us over, make us over so we can work for you. Start in me, oh God. Start in me, oh God. Start in me, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. And God, work in my home so that whatever I left that was upside down, Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that is turned right side up. God, I thank you that you're doing it right now. Father, even as we lift our hands before you this morning, we thank you for the boldness. We thank you for the compassion. And we thank you for the power. Woo, somebody shout power. We thank you for the power over the things of the enemy. We thank you, God, that you put healing in our hands. We thank you, God, that you put restoration in our mouths. And Father, we thank you that this week that we will interrupt the plan of the enemy in somebody's life. I just want you to repeat that with me. This week, I will interrupt the plan of the enemy in somebody's life. Come on, I want you to say it with me again. This week, I will interrupt the plan of the enemy in somebody's life. Come on, the last time. Come on, come on. This week, this week I, will I will interrupt the plan of the enemy in somebody's life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, if you believe it, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you believe it, say hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we put our hands together and give God praise for our pastor as she delivered that word. Not her opinion, the written word of God. Hallelujah.
the Lord bless her for her faithfulness and her commitment to the kingdom of God and God's holy word. As the musicians are playing, shall we raise our right hand for the dismissal? Shall we raise our right hand for the dismissal? And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven go forth this week treading upon serpents and scorpions may the lord give you his power his anointing his grace to grant you power over all the enemy may nothing by any means hurt you this week and may satan fall in every situation of your life not just in your life, but in your family tree, your family. May Satan fall as lightning in New Jersey, in New York, in New York City, in Georgia, in South Carolina. Baba, shabo, sorobo, hey, yeah, mama. Even on the interstates, may Satan fall when you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Living One, and when you call upon the name of the Lord, may He do exceedingly the miraculous above all that you're able to ask or think of Him in and through the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Have a miraculous week. Yes. Have a victorious week. Have a supernatural week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.